when I angle it, it should give me a nice fade. It's my first time trying it, so let's see if it works. What's up guys, I'm Ivan Preciado, professional graffiti artist, and I'm back for round three. So last time I was here, I did my own interpretation of Rick and Morty, but this time I think I'm gonna do way better doing my own version of Jack Skellington. I also wanna focus on the gradient system. I wanna see if the VR system can replicate the fade that a spray can can do. I'm super pumped, let's jump into it. So this time I'm up on a rooftop, what looks like to be maybe like New York, Manhattan type of area. This is exactly the kind of rooftop I've actually painted a few times. So this time what I wanna do is I wanna paint this whole wall with the Jack Skellington. Um, give the city something nice and creepy to look at for Halloween time. The first thing I'm gonna wanna do, I wanna get this whole wall black. So I wanna get a nice fat cap. Pink dot is probably the, one of the fattest caps out there. So let me run over to my black color and let's start banging this thing out. This pink dot is giving me a nice big spray, but it's not giving me the coverage I want. Let me see if I can move over to a 100% B. Okay, this is a little bit better. What I'm gonna do now it just buffed this whole thing black. And I wish I had a, uh, a roller actually, a paint roller to do this. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna lay this all black so that I can have Skellington coming out of the shadows. Uh, then after that, I'm gonna start forming his head and start painting some like really like ghastly, ghostly clouds around him. For this challenge, I only have an hour. So I'm gonna paint as best as I can and as fast as I can to uh, give the old Pumpkin King an honorable mural. A great thing about VR is you never run out of colors. With this trial, I really want to experiment with the fading effect. So with spray cans, the beautiful thing about spray can work is you can get hard edge lines as well as a nice soft gradient. I'm a huge Nightmare Before Christmas fan. I remember how Jack Skellington looks, but it is going to be a challenge to do him uh, justice without having a straight reference to use. So for this system, uh, the pink dot wasn't going too well for me, so I started using my favorite cap, the New York Fat, which is giving me a broader spray and uh, more coverage. So this worked out really well. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is start mapping out Skellington's head. He's a skeleton, so we're gonna use a nice white color. This time I'm gonna move to a thin cap. It's not just a big white circle with two eyeballs and a mouth. It's, he has his own little flavor, his own uniqueness that makes him Jack. Now, this is the part that's gonna be hard, is getting the right head shape around him. Oh man, yeah, I, I can already see the fading effect uh, working well. Another cool thing I'm gonna do to his face is I'm gonna green light him. That way I could really experiment with this uh, fade effect and see if it will do the exact thing. Let's start filling him in. And so I don't get confused, I'm actually gonna start the fading process a little bit right now, just so I can make sure that everything's mapped out accordingly. And now, you see I'm holding the can like this, this is a straight on shot, but when I angle it, it should give me a nice fade that's gonna go from here to real thick like that, it's gonna fade out. It should, it's my first time trying it, so let's see if it works. And it actually does it, that's pretty cool. It's really hard to get that, that perfect fade the first way I was doing it, so you'll see me doing it like this. Now, oh my God, this is so cool. The next thing I'm gonna do is actually give the green light a highlight. So what we do is we grab a lighter green and we're actually gonna fade it a little bit more. Whenever you're highlighting something, remember that light moves in um, very interesting ways. So when you have your highlight, like, a, like how I'm doing here with my green lit face, you always wanna give a lighter tone of that color just right before your actual main color. So whenever you're lighting something, there's your front light, your core shadow, and then your back light. So what I'm doing now with the black is cutting back the green a little bit to give us that core shadow that we're looking for. Let's finish filling in his head. And then I'm actually gonna go back with some gray and give Jack Skellington more detail. And we're gonna be giving him more detail using the fade effect. 
we moved to a thin cap so I can get some nice little details right here in his eyes. And I actually want to give his eyes a purple in light. An in light is pretty much, because he's a skull, obviously his eyeballs are more just empty sockets. So we're gonna give him an in light to make it seem like uh, you can see the inside of his skull. And now we are going to cut back using a nice thin cap. We're gonna cut back with his black. Give Jack perfectly structured skull. So you can see here that I'm sort of, I'm combining the techniques of hard lines and soft edges to get multiple effects for our mural. That was a little too much. So the good thing about this game and VR is that if you mess up, you do something a little too much like I just did, you could actually undo, undo, and undo. Now, a cool thing about spray cans as well is that they're pressure sensitive. If you spray hard with them, you get a faster spray, but if you spray soft with it, you should be able to get some nice soft sprays. For me, the way I paint characters, I feel like the eyes really mean a lot. So I always start with the eyes first, uh, finish with the eyes, that way before I move on to anything else. For me, it really just gives the structure to my character um, a really good base and it helps me figure out the rest of my mural. And then once you're done getting this, you're gonna wanna go with your black cap and clean up this area here to give the eyebrow stru some structure. And then this is where we're gonna uh, backlight it. So take our feather duster cap, and just spray a little bit of red in there. Now, go with the light tone. We want our light source coming from the center of the piece, so we have our lighter tone on the insides of the red. Now, whenever you're, you're painting your characters, you always wanna use the same color palette. If he's white, you give him details using other tones of white. This is where everything's gonna pretty much come to life now that we got his eyes and his nose done. This whole area, now I'm gonna do his mouth. So for this, I'm gonna use the thin cap and let's just give him a nice creepy smile. And remember too that we're painting him sort of in perspective. So one side of his smile should be showing more than the other. And for this, I actually like the drips because it adds to the, you know, the whole real grunginess of Halloween and this whole mural. Yeah, start giving him that stitched look to his mouth. And then, if possible, I'm actually gonna have the red light coming out of his mouth as well. All right, let's just see how that looks. So you can see here that I kind of have his mouth a little open, which gives us a perfect opportunity, again, to uh, put some red light in him. And the VR system is replicating the fade effect actually really well. We're gonna get pretty technical with our fades. I wanna create a nice little kind of like cloud coming out of his mouth. Almost sort of like smoke, just like some ghastliness. Looking kind of messy right now, but you're gonna see how this is gonna take form when we throw in our, our highlight. Fade it out right here over his mouth, give it a nice glow. I'm not sure if I'm too happy with that. Oh, I'm not at all. All right, scrap all that. A lot of times you think you're doing something that looks good and you step back and you're just like, what the fudge was I thinking? Before I was doing a big glow in his mouth, but I think if I could just get it to how I had it the first time, I'll just do a nice small glow and that'll be, that'll be cool right there. I'm gonna use the feather duster for this. Fade that out. That's perfect. That's cool. That's what I had to do. I had to cut back with this white right here. This finishes his, the shape of his head. And the beautiful thing about having a black background is I could just fill in all this area and then just go back with the black and cut back whatever I don't want in it. 
All right, sweet. So I'm happy with that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give him a purple background. Just do a background, maybe like some ghastly lines. Ah, all right. So, ran out of time. I really wish I could have added more details. I kind of shot myself in the foot with like going back and forth on the mouth, but I think it was still coming out great. I think the fade effect was coming out really cool. I just had a great time overall.